We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. No World War II bunkers in here. <laughs> oh, there are. Very, Very well hidden. Well <laughs> I just thought we should stop and video these massive, I think they're taro plants. I'll give it some perspective. And um, then this pheasant must have eggs in the ground here and she's, she went nuts. Yeah, big eggs. Yeah. Like 10 bigs. 10 bigs. Are they as tall as dad? <laughs> We're on, uh, I think you say Aor Island and um, we're on a mooring ball out the front of the Aor Resort. And we've just come to shore to have a walk, see how far around the island we get and look for World War II bunkers. I read that this vine was introduced during World War II to grow and camouflage their bunkers and their camps. And now it's taken over a lot of the forest in um, Vanuatu. Not so cool, because it grows so well here. Looking for the bunker. Chris is leading us on a wild goose chase. This paddock looks nice. Maybe it's in here. <laughs> this could be it. No such luck. Is it very well camouflaged? Very well camouflaged. That we can't even find it. Found it. Found it. We found it. Dead bones? Dead bones. Look at all the old water here. This looks like one of Grandpa Jeff's old sheds. <laughs> What's all on the roof? Wasp nest. nest. Oh, how far back does it go? Mm -hmm. Thank you to all the soldiers. Yeah. During World War II, these bunkers were built on Aeor Island to house ammunition for the Allied forces. The neighbouring island of Espiritu Santo had the second largest Allied base in the Pacific, and half a million servicemen and women visited the area. These bunkers are only a small insight into the infrastructure built here to sustain the war effort. Now, just a piece of the history puzzle and a memory of the legacy left behind. In more recent times, locals and resort guests have considered using the bunkers as safe shelter when tropical cyclones pose a direct threat. I think it'd be a safe spot. Would you stay in here?
mind in World War II bunkers, it was time to sail the 150 nautical miles back to Port Villa. started our journey south. Maybe one of those moments where you go, this is not what the forecast said. We've got 24 knots apparent on the nose. I think it was like 10 knots when I checked it last night at this time of the morning. So it's like double. Um, we'll just come between a bit of a squeeze of where two islands Push a bit of tide out and it was getting pretty, pretty steep and dropping off. But um, hoping we're through the through the worst of that bit and we can start getting some east in the bank so we can get Janar up and engine off. So, um, into it and we've got 25 knots 30 degrees off our bow and we're doing it uh, this is fun so we carry extra diesel jerrys in what we call our tool shed right this is our tool shed. It's pretty messy at the moment. It's got some rubbish in here. It's like a garage. We've got 100 litres of additional uh, diesel in here. We've also got a, a generator for um, making water. But four of the jerrys are upright and there's one in here that is on its side, right? And I don't know if you can see that down there. But earlier, earlier I could smell diesel. I'm gonna, oh God, where's that coming from? We've got two aft tanks that carry 250 liters each. And the last thing we want is one of our main tanks rupturing or something. But we came out of Santo into some pretty uncomfortable seas. And there was one wave in particular that um, was pretty solid. And what's happened is the jerry that was on its side has smashed down towards the stern of the boat and actually split the lid on it. And so it was weighing out diesel. Thankfully it's contained within this wet area. But I'm currently using paper towel to try and soak it up so it doesn't stink. We're, uh, we're only about four hours into our passage. Um, and it's going to be somewhere between 24 and 30 hours to get there. So. Um, uh, and a cup of tea would be nice. Contacts in. Mmm. Good idea. At the moment I sting like diesel. And, and and we're into it. It's like... Yeah, it's blowing. And we're going against it. That's always a good idea. Uh, it's supposed to be not like this, but it is. So, anyway.
setting, guys. How would you describe your day of passage? I'm felty to be honest. We know you never want to put yourself in a predicament where you're belting into things. I know that it can happen and it certainly is to us. But forecast to be still east and it's definitely south east. Oh, it's all part of sailing but Ah We've had you know 12 knots, we've had 28 knots, um Deep short waves, no waves, tide, generally against us. <laughs> oh. I'm stoked for these guys because they get to go to bed soon and wake up we're going to be almost in villa, so that's, that's a win. Our heading to begin with was to the south southeast. The arrows on the screen you can see is the southeasterly trade winds. As we were coming through the island chain, the wind was pinching. But as we rounded the bottom of Malakula, we were able to put a bit more south in our heading, switch the diesel off, and get the sails up. Thanks for watching! <laughs>